mothers in so the mothers can go through this process and once they're aware of how you feel, then you can take you know someone that might be dealing with domestic violence or abuse in their lives. Are you yourself dealing with abuse in your life? Well, you might have someone that has mental scars. We'll get into all that and a little bit more on the Kansas City Online channel with a domestic violence forum that tackles that and a lot more issues. Baby? Oh no, oh no. If I knew he was going to fight before I married him, I never would have married him. That was just as simple as that. But now they can marry and fight and everything. And then they get up and start fighting. But if you remember, mm -hmm. like my mom said, I don't mean to cut you off, but there was a time, ladies, mm -hmm. when we were considered like a woman yes. because she married your property. You became that man's property. Oh, Children, animals, and women, wives. Mm -hmm. well, if you got slapped out in public back in the 30s, 40s, and 50s, you just got slapped. Mm -hmm. Nobody saying nothing. That's the way it was. But you know, when you look at the old movies, have y'all watched the old yeah. movies? No, this is my life. It was the old movies. <laughs> Excuse me. It was my life. It might have been the old movies. But the fact is, uh, I remember years ago, uh, my father was not in my uh, family's life, but I remember him fighting my mother before he left. I remember him fighting her one night, and he was fighting her so bad, my brother jumped in and started fighting my father, and my father beat him up, and we were so scared, we ran with my mother. And I never would forget running down this uh, alley, there was an alley in those days, and we was running behind her crying because we thought my father was going to beat us up too. Mm -hmm. So I remember that years and years and years ago. But as far as abuse, it, it, it's nothing like having a black eye starting on your job the first day and people looking at you and you got sunglasses on. But here's the way my supervisor was that she just said, oh honey, uh, I have sunglasses on. Sunglasses on the first day of my job. Sunglasses. And she said, okay, I want you to go to the store and just get you something to put around your eyes. That's all she said to me. She did not tell me that you was fired. She just said, go and get this. So that's that's really, really bad. That cover up. Says, you know, when I wake up in the morning, and we're okay. If you ever lived in a house with domestic violence, that's a horrible thing to wake, to hear your mother scream, and you're in another room, and you can't do anything about it, or if you do do something about it, the repercussions that come from behind it. Uh, and I'm gonna start off with, with one that, talking about my brother, he used to wet in the bed, and he said, oh, he's just too lazy to get up. But when I started writing the story of my life, I understood why he didn't get up at night, because he knew at night the fighting would start. Mm -hmm. So if he never got up, you, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So as kids, we do things to protect ourselves. And we say, oh, he's just too lazy to get up, but he was scared yeah. because of the screaming and the hollering. Yeah. And you know, I don't know if, you, if people ever heard the holler for somebody that's getting beat. Yeah. It is a wailing that you will never, as a small child, forget. The adults don't usually understand the surmountable effect that you know their actions have on their children. Mm -hmm. Long time, not just in that moment, but like forever. Forever. It's, it stays with you forever. It's like an elephant. You know, elephants retain everything. They never forget anything. And I think the magic thing that you said is as a child, we don't forget. You know, we carry on through our lives and we see it played out as teenagers. We see it played out in so many different ways. And we don't know how to change that, you know, because we don't talk about it. You know, it could go from zero to a thousand. That's what's the real um, deceiving part about physical and emotional, but that um, level of abuse in, in a relationship, you don't know when it's going to flip. And that's essentially, to me, that's what that was saying, that, you know, everything's fine, that, you know, you go. Any type of domestic violence is just like alcohol, it's cunning. It's subtle. It is, you know, and I think that's how any type of abuse is. And I think that what I tried to train myself to say was that I don't want to be in a dysfunctional situation based on just, and a lot of times it'll happen where you say, well, I'm not going to accept that. And then somebody will say, don't be like that. I'm just playing with you. And I say, I say, no, I don't, I don't play like that. I, I'm not going to do that to you. 
you're not going to do that to me. <laughs> and over a long period of time now, I recognize as nice as I like you and you like me, this may not work because there are issues that need to be addressed. The children, based on the way they was raised. Uh -huh. You know, so like, so like they say, like, the caregiver not being an, an inherited trait, it's an acculturated trait. So like, it's not enough just to give the parents a good paying job. How to raise children has to be reestablished. And okay. that's what's been, and I'm hearing that this is what's been lost. Tries to tell someone, then the father might hit her or abuse her mother more. Mm -hmm. And then she's the cause of it. She thinks in her mind, yeah. I'm the cause of him doing And that is, I mean, that is something we all have thought at one time. Yeah. When something happens, maybe it's because, you know, something I did for this to happen. My girl. <clears throat> Can't wait. children had to go through, you went through, you're still here. One of the things that I think I waited all my life to hear is that I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. And I never got that, you know. So I think that, you know, the greatest gift that we can give our children is when we know that we inflicted pain to them is to come back and say, I'm sorry. You know, I, I got you. you. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't here. My own mother to this day, she was never safe. I'm sorry, you know, but if she did, that, that closes a whole door to a lot of things. And I think our children love us while we're going through it. They may not understand what we're going through, but I think we owe it to our children to let them know because they live in it. When, when, when you're getting beat, they're beat too, yeah. you know. My father used to say, don't let nobody know what's going on in our house. Well, hell, they can look out there and see. You know, you didn't have to. You know, that was the biggest thing. You didn't have to tell nobody they knew what time it was, you know, because you could hear the hollering and screaming. And because we live in a male-dominant world, it is acceptable. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've seen people slap people, and nobody would intervene in it and turn their head like they didn't even see it. Mm -hmm. Our community has lost empathy. And how that happens, and when I was, I was listening to her, you know, you hear that, and that becomes the norm. I said, well, my mother and father didn't fight each other. I didn't get that from them. But after my parents divorced, and my brother became like the man of the house, he just felt like that's what he would have to do to get us under control. And he thought that being physical with us was okay. Because he saw other people do it. He didn't see my dad do it. But he thought that was because we're such a male-dominated society. We don't talk about feeling. I know this, and I'm not saying this to embarrass you, but the girls who laugh kind of laugh. And, because when you're uncomfortable with something, that you'll have an inappropriate response. That's why I tell people all the time, I said, you can't judge somebody's trauma by the way they responded right. to you, because many times we have numbed ourselves up. Uh -huh. So my story, when I was listening to her, I remember the denial, the shame, the blame game, you know, I'm in this situation and it's my fault. But when I was being abused, I didn't tell anybody. I kept it to myself. But that one beating 
that had me so bruised up I could not even go to work. And people knew I was one of those women that I was going to work because I'm paying my bills myself. I want to be independent. But here I am, this woman with a finished college and got a good job, and somebody's blacking my eyes to the point where I can't even see to drive myself to work. And I remember saying to my mother yesterday, when we talk a lot now more than we did before, and she said, I just, I want to know where you got that from, why you thought it was okay. I said, I see boys mishandled me when I was younger, but they hands on me, boys will be boys. Or they'll, you'll hear somebody say, don't be rough with her, she's a girl, but the behavior is not really checked. So with this young lady having that experience of hearing that, and then feeling like, you know, this is so embarrassing. This is so humiliating. This is so, it's uncomfortable. So you want to hide. And that's in essence what she was doing was hiding in her own home. You know, and you, can, you can't really hide from it because you can hear it, you know. So for me, I think the reason why I, I'm probably as impassioned as I am about stuff is because, you know, the one line that kept, she kept repeating, the bruises may heal, but the pain remains the same. And that was what I kept saying to my brother. I said, you mad about the bruises on me that somebody else put on me. But do you remember when I burned your blue jeans and you flashed my eye? Do you remember that? You don't remember, you don't, you know, we lock stuff up and we don't want to, we don't want to face blame. And, you know, and now that my brother's deceased now and he was killed in a domestic violence situation because he could not control his anger. Mm -hmm. And anger comes from a feeling of not yeah. feeling worthy or not feeling heard. And I think when we start dissecting it, you know, as a family, and we still have family members that just won't face it, but I have to, because I was the one that found him. So, you know, the aftermath of those feelings is that there can be healing, you know. So for the little girls who haven't had that experience, I pray to God you never do. And when you hear a man say that they have been hit, don't be surprised. Because the flip side of that abuse is when he said, her people, her people, I never thought that I would ever raise my hands to another adult after I became an adult. But I was so psychologically abused by my husband that I just snapped one night. I just snapped. And all the pain, all the anger, all the rage came boiling up out of me. And the next thing I know, he wasn't fighting me back. I was beating him. And I've never been so ashamed in my life because I knew what it felt like to be on the other side. The very next day, I went and signed myself up for some therapy. I went immediately to get some therapy because I said, I, I don't want to be this person. I don't want to be this person. I said, because even the things he did were bad and it, and it carried me through a lot of psychological and emotional stuff. If we don't have the right to put our hands on anyone, and it's never okay. I don't care what the situation is unless you're defending yourself for your life. It's never okay. Women shouldn't hit men. Men shouldn't hit women. Girls shouldn't hit boys. Boys shouldn't hit girls. My mother's never done that to me. My mother's never done that to me. Never. You know, and so sometimes that's all we need. But you see that. You know what I'm saying? So somebody can help you be all you can be. 15, you got a life ahead of you. You know, and if you if happiness belongs to you, and you take my number because if you ever need somebody, I'll be there for you. Because I know it's only a short period of time because then you're going to be grown. But right now, this, this is the most difficult time of your life. Don't get caught up in it thinking I'm going to just keep all of this good stuff to myself. Explore it. And go back. You know, we need to do that conference that I did with my mom and him. And we need to bring the mothers in yeah. because so the daughters can talk to the mothers and the mothers can talk to the daughters. Because sometimes we don't know because we see ourselves in you. you. You know what I'm saying? So we close up and we hurt the very thing that we love. So we're going to do a thing where we're going to bring the mothers in so the mothers can go through this process. And once they're aware of how you feel, then you can take it to another level. But sometimes they just don't know how much they hurt you. You know, because I was saying, well, I used to, I used to be so unhappy with my mother that I used to see these cracks and I'd go home and step on my ass one, and I said, I done broke my back. I mean, that was the thing they said, and my mother cut to the door and I said, what you doing walking? And I said, you crazy ass girl? And I was like, step on me, hear me, hear me, that's that. You just know it, I'm gonna break her back. You know, but it was, it was not that. Don't laugh. 
but that's how dysfunctional you get. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So every boy that I thought I was running after, they say you went after your dad, I was running after my mama. Because my mother was so inclusive, you know, when she did she pushed you away, that when I've been a boy and he pushed me away, oh, he loves me. Because that's what my brother is. So I don't want you to be like me, spending all your life chasing after something that can't change you. Mm. You know, I'm serious. You know what I'm saying? You spend all your time running after somebody that can't chase you, and you're chasing your mama or your daddy. You, you know what? Let them go. They grow. But you make sure you tell them how you feel. <laughs> When's your birthday? Two days Leo. Well, what's going on with you? Because princess ain't got a problem telling me. No, you Virgo? They keep it here. Uh, not my daughters. They both Virgos. Well, they tell me. But that's me because they got you. Oh, I know. That's yeah, because. you tell. Would you tell me how you feel? Look at you now. This is my new daughter. <laughs> now, what's going on with you? No, something going on with you. Because she's been here it all week. Yeah. I've been telling her, her princess in the Kia. What's princess going on? in the Kia. <laughs> Don't be looking over that way for your answer. <laughs> your answer this way. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> yes, it is. You can't even look at your face. <laughs> and you know, I'm not even this one. Kind of psychic. Don't be looking at her. <laughs> she, 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 she's having her own issues. She's having her own issues. Okay. <laughs> What's the most important thing in your life right now? <laughs> your boyfriend. That's what we need to start at. 